Good morning, everyone, and happy Friday. We have made it to the end of the first week. I guess not the first week of January, but the first week of this video series. So we've already gone through, well, today's our third video, but we've already gone to, through two videos talking about our purpose, trying to help identify why are we here? What were we created for? What is the purpose for my life? And how do I actively live in my purpose? And actually, that last part is what we're kind of going to talk about today. So what does it look like when I actively live in my purpose? But before I get started, hope everyone had a wonderful week. Um, and I hope they, honestly, I hope you guys took the homework series that I kind of tasked everyone to do. Remember, if you don't have a journal, it's important to get one because... The things that we're going to be talking about um, this year, I don't know, sometimes I feel like when I write stuff down, like I used to be a, a major, a big time journaler or a diary person, and I feel like when I write stuff down and then I look back on it, I feel like it's a good, I don't know, I kind of feel like it encourages me somewhat to know the growth that I've gone through or be like, oh my gosh, in 2012, look where I was, but now in 2020, look where I am now. So I don't know. I feel like it's a good way to measure and track your growth. And then also it's a, it's a good release. If you need another form of release, it's sometimes it's always good to, um, to write yourself down on paper. It just instead of, you know, going out and being destructive or lashing out on people, which, you know, if you have anger problems, that's, that could that could actually happen. So, yes, sometimes, um, or I would suggest getting a journal and writing stuff down. Definitely for this video series for the year, but you know, outside of that, just for whatever you want to do. One thing that I noticed that I haven't been doing is prefacing my video with my phrase that I used to say all the time last year, and I'm gonna start now. So, as always, God is blessing us. He's always gonna be blessing us today. We are gonna be talking about the practical application of living out our purpose. What does that look like? What does that feel like? How should we be living out our living in our purpose? How should we be actively um, fulfilling our purpose every single day? Why should we be doing it? And how does that look like? So last video on Wednesday, I talked, I I or I mentioned the phrase. He, as in God, God took something so destructive in my life and turned it into my purpose. And I think, I don't know, that quote has honestly just been resonating with me because it. I think that it's so important to kind of look at the places that you've been and the things that you've been through. And that honestly will help you not only identify your purpose, but then live in your purpose, live so much in your purpose Um so that it's help it's going to be constructive not only to yourself but to other people okay so i think of i think i shared my story last time about how i was in a place that i just felt like i wasn't growing i wasn't developing even though i was a christian i had a i thought i had a good relationship with god like i felt like i was just very detached from blessings and receiving joy and peace and just abundant an abundant life and after god you know, so graciously checked me, um, I realized the things that I need to do in order to mold or in order to fit my life or in order to direct my life into the area of blessings and abundance. But then I also realized like, hey, like this isn't just for me. I know there, I know, even though I have not had, you know, personal conversations with everyone in the world, but I know there are a lot of people out there in the world that feel the exact same way. So I can help them too. Like, why can't we be on this journey together? So, that's kind of um like that's why I love that that quote because I feel like it really helps identify what our purpose is and then helps us realize like hey even though that whatever destructive thing came to destroy us we can use that to make it a constructive part of our life and use it to really fuel our purpose so whether you really realize it or not, you were created for much more than what you're thinking right now. Anytime God creates something, um, he is very specific about its purpose. If you think, for my Bible scholars out there, and this is actually a popular story, so you don't have to be a Bible scholar. But if you think about um, Noah, like Noah when he was building the ark, and I guess you do have to be a Bible scholar because before I really read the story in the Bible, I was just like, yeah, Noah built this ark. But if you read the story, God was so specific about like the measurements and, um, you know, every part, every piece and part of like the, the material used for the ark, he was very specific about every 
per everything that was going to be used for that ark because he understood that the purpose for that ark was not only to uh, be a boat, not only to, you know, have people and animals on it, but to keep them safe and dry and um, protected for 40 days and 40 nights. And I think beyond that, you know, if you read the story, you know, you know, but you know, he was, he's very specific about our purpose. Same thing with us. We weren't created just to exist here. Like we have a specific purpose and he didn't make Ashley, um, an African-American girl that lives in a suburb of Cleveland, Ohio and works at this job and has this group of friends. He didn't do, he didn't place all of that together just for happenstance. Like he was, he, it just wasn't, it just didn't fall together. But there was a specific purpose around that. So again, I think I said it last time too, make sure that you're looking at your, the circumstances around you, the people around you, the doors that are being closed, the doors that are being opened. Everything around you is specific towards your purpose. And when we're living out our purpose, how it's going to look like is, um, it's going to, it should have a positive effect on the people around you. If it doesn't, it's probably not your purpose because why would we be purposeful in anything that's negative towards others? So once we understand that, it's going to be easy to um, yield ourselves or to sacrifice ourselves to whatever our purpose is. So, and, and sacrifice, by sacrifice, I mean, um, I think I read somewhere, I can't remember, but if you are not willing to sacrifice certain things, if not everything, or well not everything, but if you are not willing to sacrifice major things for what you feel like your purpose is, then it's probably not your purpose. For example, for this Be Blessed video series, again, one of my purposes is to help people develop and grow. And I think that this video is not only helping other people do that, but it's definitely helping myself do that. Um, and a sacrifice that I have been making in order to put these videos out there at least is sacrificing my sleep. And y'all know, if I if y'all didn't watch my videos last year, but you're new um, to the Be Blessed video series for 2020, I really enjoy my rest. I really enjoy my sleep. I like to just relax, and I like to be able to wake up when I want, and you know, sleep an adequate amount of hours until I'm ready to get up. But I really had to sacrifice my um, my rest or my sleep, and not in a negative way, in order to make sure that these videos were put out there. So that's another way that you can um, determine whether or not you are on track for your purpose is if you are willing to sacrifice things for it. It could be your time. It could be relationships. It could be your rest. You know, anything that you hold serious, are you willing to sacrifice for it? And that doesn't mean that you have to, but are you willing to? Like you could be saying, like, yeah, I'm willing to sacrifice this relationship, but you don't have to. But if it comes down to it, am I more focused on helping people grow and develop than I am focused on, you know, X, Y, and Z? At this point in my life, yes, I am. So are you willing to sacrifice for it? And then once you figure that out, then you need to figure out what areas do you need to sacrifice for it? Like that, that's a big thing too. Like what, once you figure out what your purpose is, you have to identify the, the places in your life that need to be sacrificed. And trust me, there's always at least three areas, okay? There's always at least three areas that you could sacrifice, not everything, but some portions of it in order to fulfill your purpose and actively walk out in your purpose and things like that. So again, that could be your time, that could be your relationships, um, that can be yourself. Are you willing to sacrifice yourself and the things? And when I say yourself, I mean like your your emotions, your your own will for your life, your own thoughts for your life. Are you willing to sacrifice that in order to say like, hey, I know this, my purpose is here. So I know that some things that I enjoy doing now, I probably can't do in the future or I probably can't do right now. Okay. And once you adopt that attitude, once you really get that ingrained in your life, God's going to honor your sacrifice. He's not going to allow, he's not going to make you sacrifice something and not, um, and not bless you in the end. Another story in the Bible really quick, um, is the story of Abraham and how he really wanted, he really wanted children. Like he really, him and his wife really wanted children. There's this guy in the Bible, if you don't know, his name is Abraham. He was married to this lady named Sarah. They really wanted children. And um, they would really wanted children together because I'm pretty sure he had a child out of 
not out of wedlock, but he had, he had another child. But Abraham and Sarah really wanted a child together. And they were, and they had gotten to the point where I think they were like 90 or 100, very old. And they still hadn't had a, a baby. And they were praying and asking God, like, please give me a baby. Please. So God blessed them with a baby. And they had Isaac. And then God was like, hey, now that you have this baby, I need you to sacrifice him. And back then in the day, sacrificing was, I'm going to build this fire and I'm going to throw you on the fire. Or not throw you, but I'm going to build this fire and you... I'm going to sacrifice you. So, immediately, Abraham, I'm, and I'm not sure, I don't know if it was immediate, I don't know if the Bible necessarily specifies that, but I'm sure there was some hesitance there. But the next morning, Abraham got up and was like, hey, Isaac, let's go. Like We got to go up this mountain for, you know, X amount of reason. And Abraham was willing to sacrifice the thing that, and, and he went up there and he was about to sacrifice his son. In the end, he didn't end up doing it. And God blessed him for that. But Abraham was willing to sacrifice the thing that he had wanted for a very long time that he finally got. And God was like, well, hey, I need you to sacrifice this to me. Now, like, that's kind of the heart that we have to take on every aspect of our life. If it has to do with our purpose, and if we are actively living in our purpose, we have to be willing to sacrifice even the things that we may have wanted for years. Okay. Even the things that we have been, that have been deeply ingrained in us for years, we have to put that aside and say, you know what? If God has called me to do something, I just got to do it. I just got to do it. Now, we're human, so I'm sure there's going to be some moments of hesitance, some moments of delay. But let those be moments, not, uh, you know, time periods, okay? So, and in the end, just to wrap up the story, just to see, you know, how it all works out. Abraham B. Abraham's family ended up being the greatest family. Abraham's family ended up being the, the Israelites, like Israel. Abraham was the father of Israel. So in that, in that aspect, like God, because God saw his heart and saw his willing to, saw his will to sacrifice, he blessed him. He blessed him. So the same thing for us. Once we actively are walking in our purpose, um, God is going, and we have a heart that's willing to sacrifice some things that we may not have sacrificed before god's gonna honor our blessings and that, my friends is when we start to be is when we start to live blessed and abundant and fulfilled lives that is when we start to receive joy and peace as soon as we change our mindset as soon as our heart is switched over to oh a willingness of sacrificing that is when we just feel blessed and abundant and fulfilled and overjoyed and we are on track to living out our purpose and achieving our goals, okay? So, yes, that is practical application for um, living out our purpose. Next week, we're going to talk about goals. We're going to identify some goals for ourselves. Really talk about the importance of goal setting. Remember, um, this month we're talking about being purposeful. And if you don't have goals in your life, then, you know, next week we're going to make some because that is directly in line with making sure that we're actively living in our purpose every day. So hope everyone has a wonderful Friday. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to go live on Saturday, but I'll announce it later today if I do. But have a great Friday. If I don't talk to you guys tomorrow, have a great weekend and I will see you on Monday. Bye.